welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Legend of Dragoon. And we tragically have lost BJ for the moment because he's having car problems. But in exchange, we managed to conjure up a Brandon. I missed out on a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, you know, um... Alright, so, pretty much, um... Like, in the last part, as we saw, like, in the last cutscene, so, uh... Big motherfucker Kongol here, you know, the guy that, you know, was doing the wrestling moves on us. He's gonna be our next party member. Oh, yes. yeah, I've definitely missed out on the line. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, sadly, Kongol does not bring his wrestling moves to for us, but he does bring off, he does bring his uh, big fuck off axe. Oh. So, oh. He, so he's our axe wielder. Okay. All right. All right. So, so suffice it to say, you know, pretty much as per tradition, you know, um, which called uh the second to last person I got in my party, uh, which called they're gonna, they're gonna be leaving, you know, to make room for Congo, so it gives me a chance to show them off. So, uh, so yeah, so pretty much, pretty much, I think for the like the majority of the rest of this disc, actually, you know, get used to seeing a party of Dark Congo and Meru. All right, I'm perfectly content with that. Pretty much, like, with Kongol here, you know, yeah, because all of our party members, it brings, like, an element for the Dragoons when they eventually do get their Dragoon spirits, you know, Kongol does bring the Earth magic. So, pretty much with Kongol joining, we've pretty much got all the, all the eight elements. Huh, Okay. So, seeing as how we have all the elements, does that mean Kongo is technically our final party member? <laughs> More or less, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, you know, this is why, you know, we're this is why I was waiting until we're halfway through the game before we go on hiatus, you know, and have the audience vote for the final party. It's because, you know, you gotta make sure you all get an opportunity to see what these characters can do. <laughs> yeah, really. That's true. So with that said, so now that we so um, now that we got Congo in the party, now we can actually do primarily what we came here to do. So uh, yeah, Brandon, I know you missed out, but um, Dart's Dragoon Spirit had been stolen like at the very beginning of this disc. So now now we can actually go and get it back. Oh. Okay. And this guy. Uh, this guy that's kind of lying on the ground, Garage, you know. So, okay, so Garage, he was a former pupil of Hoshal, who, you know, pretty much, you know, left and formed this gang. And now he's about to drop a freaking bombshell. Oh, a plot twist. So I know, yeah, B uh, Brenda, I know you you weren't here, but Ryan, if you remember, um, what you call it, if you remember uh, Princess Lisa, you know, she had asked us, you know, can, can you figure out what's going on with my sister? Because, you know, like a couple of months ago, you know, she was riding a horse, there was an accident, she fell off her horse, and all of a sudden her personality changed after the fall. You know, it, it's not it's not because, oh, she literally hit her head and that fucked with her brain. It was like, yeah, no, this was all a conspiracy. So the the horse, the accident was pretty much staged. They, per, you know, this gang purposefully, you know, spooked the horse. You know, it knocks the real princess unconscious. The Then uh, this, uh, the princess that we currently have right now, she's a fake. That's associated with the gang. They literally switched the princesses. And that's why she acts so different. Ah. Uh, interesting. Yeah, and pretty oh, much like oh. as, you know, Garrett was saying with his dying words was, you know... Yeah, you know, it... it yeah, it... Blah. So yeah, the princess that's in the castle right now is a fake. The real one, she's actually hidden in the castle. I kind of have to question, you know, okay, if you're going to switch the princess, why would you bring the real princess back to her castle just to hide her there? I mean, I, 
That's one plot twist I don't understand. Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just hide her here? Because oh. nobody comes here. <laughs> Ulterior motives? Maybe they needed her alive for some reason? You'll, you'll see why mostly, like, in, in this video and in the next video. Because, I mean, pretty much now we gotta, you know, we gotta stage the, uh... We gotta go find the real princess and, you know, stage an escape. But it's like... Yeah, th like, I'm all for this plot twist. I love, you know, it's like, I don't mind the fact that it's like, oh, okay, you know... It's a fake and everything, but it's just... Oh, God, when you get into, like, how they handled it, it was like... Really? Why would you do Why would you go this far? <laughs> Oh, there we go. Okay, everybody, scour, scour, like scavenge the area and see if you can try to find uh, the the missing uh, Wingly power. Oh, I found it. What? The, how'd you find? How'd you find that? It was the only glowy, shiny thing in the room. How could you miss it? Come on, guys. <laughs> but we finally have our fire dragoon back. That? I mean, okay. I don't know, if, for some reason, it feels like it didn't take us that long to find it again. And to be fair, it really doesn't. I mean, I mean, yeah, we're well over halfway through the second disc, but regardless, you know. Seems like, seemed like it take, seemed like it took you a much longer period of time for um, Cloud and the game to get all the materia from... Oh, God. My mind is going blank on me. What was the little ninja's name? Yuffie? Uh, Yuffie. Yuffie, thank you. God damn it. It's like, no, it is not Tifa. No, oh, it was, was Yuffie. I, 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 thank I, I you. I was about to say, I, I knew what you were getting at, but I wanted to hear where you were going with it first before I... <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I didn't so know out of it right now. I would have said that from the get-go. It's like, no, like, no, no. Was he, it felt was like, he talking it felt about like the it's character? Like a... Was he talking about the place where Yuffie was... Yuffie's hometown, or...? Both. <laughs> <laughs> Technically both. Yeah, it seemed like it seemed like it took a much uh, longer uh, period of time for Cloud and the gang to get all the materia back from Yuffie compared to how long it took for Darn and everybody else to get the red eyed dragoon power back. Yeah, but that, that that was a whole side quest within itself. Like, not to just flesh out getting the materia back, but also uh fleshing out Yuffie's backstory. Which they do for all the characters in seven. Then again, oh, you all yeah. you, you all know this. We 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 play we played that game before. <laughs> <laughs> but you can actually watch right here on Spiffy Needle Geeks. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Please, it really helps. <laughs> As seen in the description of the majority of our videos. Okay, so that being said. To continue the story, we have to go back to, you know, Fletz, which is where um, the princess is. But we're going to do a couple of things first. So, if you actually go to the um, the city of Donau, which, if you remember, this is where, um, where we picked up Meru. This is where, like, the mayor's son was, you know, was from. So, if you go to Donau, you can actually see, oh, the mayor's son and his fiance are getting married. Oh. I swear to God, there better not be any rude interruptions during this wedding. No, 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 no. It's just normal wedding. Oh, okay, good. Like I was worried that it's like out of the blue, explosions everywhere. Another antagonist comes in and ruins everything. And like motherfucker. Okay, well, thank God that is not the case. Random little thing. So, yeah, if you hit that little exclamation mark when she when Kate goes to throw the bouquet, you can Dart can actually push Shauna in its path and Shauna can catch it. Oh. It does nothing. It's just there to be cute. <laughs> oh. I mean, and that, that, that's really why I'm showing this off. I mean, this really has no bearing on the plot or anything whatsoever, but I figured I I figured I'd show it off. But can the bouquet be sold? <laughs> <laughs> it's a key what? item. <laughs> I mean, she said she said it does nothing. I mean, it's got to be worth something, right? <laughs> and how to sell this bouquet of flowers it's worth for a thousand bucks on eBay? Wait, wait, what? Wait, wait, what? 
It's like, it's worth its weight in memories. <laughs> you know what? You're absolutely right. It's like, yeah, remember, remember that time that we had to go and find our magic rock? <laughs> okay, so anyway, now, when you get Kongle, you're going to want to go all the way back to Lohan here. So if you, remember, if you remember Lohan, this was like, you know, the big merchant city and shit. Mm -hmm. When you get oh, Kongle, wait, I... come here immediately. The reason you want to come here immediately is the street vendor has something for Kongle. Huh. Okay. Ooh, shiny thing. Oh, wait. So are we... So, yep. It's it's Kongol's Dragoon Spirit. Oh. And it's being sold on the... Okay. For a thousand Yeah, it, yeah it's gold. being sold on the streets. Mother... Kongol, crush him. Yeah, now that being said, sadly, you cannot haggle your way to pick up the Dragoon Spirit for free. You know, like we did with the bottle before. You actually have to pay full price for this, which is... Yeah, 1,000 1, gold. <laughs> Seriously, it's like, ah. you don't have 1,000 gold, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> so, there we go. We got the gold dragoon spirit. So now, Kongol can go dragoon. Yes. Now, if you, now you can pick that up anytime after you've uh, gotten Kongol. If for whatever reason, and I honestly did not know this until, like, you know, I actually had to look it up because I always, you know, picked up the spirit. If you somehow miss out on the, you know, buying the Dragoon Spirit at Lohan, you can pick it up way later in the game. I mean, Kongol's going to become a Dragoon regardless. The problem, though, is that the point in the story where Kongol can, uh, where he automatically can pick up the Spirit is uh, not only, it's like, oh god, where is it? Um, literally maybe like um, the last dungeon of the game. Oh. So it's like, you know, oh yeah, you'll get it automatically, but it's level one, it's way fucking late, so it's like, why even bother at that point? So that's where it's like, you know, yeah, if you intend on using Kongol, especially if you want, like, the Earth Dragoon and everything, get it now, this is the earliest point that you can get him as a Dragoon. Huh. Okay. okay. I don't I don't know why they chose to wait that goddamn long to be like, you know, oh hey, by the way, you can go pick up your dragoon spirit now, you know, here you go. And you're literally like you're doing like some of the last boss fights in the game, and that's when he gets it. It's like, really? You waited till then? <laughs> What's wrong with you? You must be a total noob if you waited until, like, near endgame to get the gold dragon, dragoon piece. You know, you know, you know, I was actually kind of, I was actually kind of relieved. Because I saw, I saw the guard come up behind Dart, and then he, here he goes saying, you know, Oh, oh. You, bad people coming into the castle without permission. I was literally about to say, what are you talking about? We were here earlier in the game. What are you calling bad people? But then the moment I was about to say, he was like, ha, oh, just kidding. I know who you guys are. I was like, Fuck. well, it's just, it's more or less like, you know, it's such a great, it's such a, spe it's a special day. So, you know, well, I'll let you, I'll let you in. But, you know, as you said, these knights now that are wandering around in the castle, these are not the normal knights. These are bandits. So oh. basically, like, again, this is all part of this plan that, you know, the bandits hatched up. So it's like, it's not enough that they got a fake princess in there. They also switched up the knights to make sure that nobody's going to fuck this up. Oh. So you know how before we were bitching about, you know, oh my god, you know, they're trying to put platforming in my uh, role-playing game? Well, yeah. now we get to play, now they're trying to put Metal Gear in my role-playing game. Because now we gotta sneak our way through the castle without getting seen. Hmm. Well? I mean, they kinda uh, did I... this with Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. So, basically, you wanna stay out of their line of sight, you know, 
keep in the shadows, you know, hide in rooms, all that other shit. If you do get caught, I mean, it literally, it's like, they're just like, you know, hey, what are you doing here? Get out of here. And it's like, you know, you just start over from the bottom of the tower. Also like Legend of Zelda, a green of time. <laughs> yeah, I feel like with stealth in an RPG, that's a, I feel like that's a different story. Like when you compare stealth in an RPG to platforming in an RPG. I suppose. All right, so the first thing you want to do, yeah, yeah, you want to go to the tower on your right, you know, because, yeah, this is where Princess Lisa is, so now we're telling her that, you know, okay, we got the info that, uh, that you, that you asked for, so, yeah, uh, your sister is, yeah, uh, sister's a fake, real one is hidden in the castle somewhere. It's like, again, I question why, but whatever. Let's see. Let's see if we can use the stars to find the missing princess. Because stars can do that, apparently. <laughs> if we yeah, call in, the this, in this of universe, the that's what stars can do. I mean, yeah. <laughs> If we follow this constellation that has the shape of a Machamp holding a survivor, we'll be able to find the missing princess. I mean, that kind of thing does, ex uh, does exist. <laughs> why, <laughs> why, why, I, why, why I gave us a very specific uh, example of a constellation? Don't ask me why. That was literally the first thing that came to mind. I, he I, see const I hear constellations. And I you think, think of like, Snap. Other, like other... what? What? You think Pokemon Snap, right? Oh, I, oh, actually, um, no. I mean, that's that's actually really that's actually a really good example. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. I was more so thinking of um, if you've seen a Pokemon Jirachi Wishmaker during the credit sequence, um, there are some moments where they actually draw out like some constellations of other Pokemon. One of which, as I said earlier, was like, oh. uh, I think it was the last one, uh, a Machamp holding a Surviper in his arms. But yeah, no, I, I didn't even think about the whole Pokemon Snap thing. Yeah, it's like... It's like, yep, so that's pretty much what happens if you get caught. So that's where it's like, okay, fine. All right, I'll start back from the beginning. Oh. <laughs> you literally touched him. <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah, you literally touched his back and he's like, wait, what the hell was that? Stupid fucks. <laughs> yeah, flies. Bandits. Uh, Who are you? Oh, come on. Wait, what? Oh, wait, okay. I'm going to go ahead and assume that guard... Instantly turned around the moment you're about to go up on uh, through those stairs. Stairs. Yeah. And this is the thing. It's like you know, Princess Lisa even said, you know, here, take me with you. You might be able to avoid trouble. It doesn't fucking matter because the same thing happens regardless. Ah, uh, jeez. So that's where it's like you know, it's like again, it's just it's like. Why can't this be like Metal Gear? Why can't when we get caught, just choose to mow them down? <laughs> it's like, there, now, there, now we have silence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. It would, it would also be really good, you know, in case you want to get in on that extra experience, you know. <laughs> but grind sessions are why most people hate RPGs. Well, the, well, those are, <laughs> well, in some, in a lot of cases, and I think I'm kind of guilty of this as well, you know, it's, um, to some people, it's like, in some cases, that's only for people who have, like, short attention spans. So in that case, it's like, alright, if you have a short attention span, because, 
if you have short attention spans for grinding in RPGs, I was like, okay, clearly they're not for you. But if you're the exact opposite, then okay, that's fantastic. I'm, I say I'm kind of guilty of this, because it's like, it's not that I don't have like a, it's not like I have like a, what was it? It's not like I am like too lazy to do like a bunch of grinding, or I have like short attention spans when it comes to stuff like that. I'm more so scared to touch new RPGs, if only be like like not solely because of grinding purposes, but if only because of how long they usually take. Okay, well, yeah, you don't you don't have to have a uh, you you don't have to have a short attention span or be lazy just to find grinding tedious. I mean, that's that, that, that's pretty common. Right, right. Yeah, it's like it's like um, when it comes to like when it comes to like the fact I like I get a bit terrified of trying new RPGs or, or and all that stuff. It's like that's that's kind of the re that's pretty much the reason why it's been taking me a lot longer than expected to finish up Kingdom Hearts One. Because it's like I, because last time I played that game, which was like I would I would like to say like several months ago, <laughs> um. I'm liking what I'm seeing so far, but it's like, oh, it's so long. It's like, uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this because I have other things to do. That being said, that being said, I'm still actually rather surprised that out of all the Kingdom Hearts games that have been released thus far, okay, well, I mean, I, I could be wrong. I'm just. Basing us on what on what I've been told like in like in recent months or whatever But it seems like yeah Kingdom Hearts 3 is like the shortest game out of the entire lineup. I wouldn't say it's the shortest It's definitely straightforward Hmm, oh, okay, okay Like I get I guess it's like a it's the shortest like uh, Mainstream Kingdom Hearts game like if like if you compare Kingdom Hearts uh, 1 and 2 then Three would be the shortest one out of the out of the three. Yeah, out of the three, out of the three, then yes. Yeah. Okay. I I think that's I think that's what I w I was told. It's like out of the out of the three like a uh, mainstream uh, Kingdom Hearts games, you know, not the side games or whatever. Kingdom Hearts three was surprisingly the shortest one. Yeah, but with but with talk of DLC being on the way for Kingdom Hearts three, that's bound to change. Oh yeah. Really? Oh really? I I, really? I I figured that was going to happen. Yeah. It's like, yeah. It's like what DLC are they doing? Well, they're, they're well, well. What we well, a lot of us have speculated is the fact that they're going to be adding a critical mode, because what's a Kingdom Hearts game without a critical mode? It was it was understandable with uh, Kingdom Hearts One because even then the final mix version of Kingdom Hearts One did not have critical mode. So, uh, but every other game past that, I want to say I don't know about 350 over two days or recoded, but I know most of other uh, Kingdom Hearts games have had critical mode and there was even some talk about how um when what was it called the final chapter prologue for it, it's it's the one like i guess i'm trying to find the right words to it's the one where you play as aqua for a little bit in 2.8 and and it's like telling a bit of the story before kingdom hearts and everything um right oh. there was a there, there was like a customization feature where you could like outfit your character with like little accessories and stuff like that they were thinking about adding that as well so, um, oh, among, amongst, okay. the, uh, amongst a few other things that people are speculating for DLC. All right, but anyway, as far as uh, as far as this game is concerned, so surprise twist: the real princess was hidden away in another dimension created by some weird space magic in her room. The fuck. Uh, uh. Do, do you see what I mean? This plot is bullshit. How old, hit, how they, old they, is this? <laughs> they hid the princess in the space-time continuum. You're telling me that bandits, you know, swapped out the princesses? Okay, no problem. I I see where you're going there. You know, and rather than keeping the real princess far away from the castle so that they can actually go through with their plan, they drag the real princess. Back home, so she and just to put her in her room. When was this game released again? I gotta look this up again. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta look this up. Take her, take her to her room. There's no way she'll be able to escape there. Whenever this, whenever this game was released, 
probably would seem normal back then. I guess, but still, like, like, especially like, considering if you were of that age and generation, you probably wouldn't question it anyway. Because people, because people back then, like myself, were too naive to look deep into games like this. Well, no, it's not even the it's not even the issue of being naive. It's just a matter of it's a video game. Goddamn it, I'm gonna play it regardless of how much story the sense make or how much sense the story. How, mu how much sense the how story much makes. sense the story makes god fucking damn it i can speak what? i swear which is why i played through sonic 06 or shadow the hedgehog because <laughs> like because like little did i know the story in those games were gonna make a whole lot of sense i still play them huh. <laughs> anyway anyway yeah so um pretty much um okay so yeah, so join us next time, where we will actually continue, uh, we'll actually be, uh, finishing this little subplot. So now that we got the real princess, now we gotta crash the freaking party, and actually put this freaking uh, scheme that the bandits cooked up to rest.